You think I'm asleep, don't you? You think I'm asleep, that's why I'm facing away from you. You think you've caught me on the case asleep. Well, can I let you into a secret? You're wrong, because did you think this was me? Ha ha ha! You thought that was me, didn't you? You thought that you were looking... Oh, oh no! That wasn't me at all. It's me, P.I. Paul, Private Investigator Paul. Pip to my friends. And you thought you were looking at me. Gotcha! Now, hang on a minute. I can't tell you about the rest of the case dressed like, dress like this. Hang fire for a moment and I'll be back. Well, that's better. I, I feel a bit more like a detective, a private investigator in my clothes again. I still can't believe that I got you. But to be honest, sometimes we do see things, don't we? And we don't recognise what they are or who they are. And actually, that's got something to do with the next bit of our case. I want to say, investigators, a huge thank you for your work over the weekend in the case of the Christ. You investigated the account of the empty tomb that the women and Peter found the tomb empty and they found the grave clothes and angels. And all the evidence that you looked at pointed to the truth that Jesus really is alive. He's not just God's king, but he's the risen king who's alive today. That's wonderful news. But I've had a new piece of evidence come in from Dr. Luke's book and I need you to help me look at it. It's the evidence of two men. They were walking along a road and they thought they knew who they were walking with, a stranger. But actually, I want you to work out the identity of this stranger. Do you think you can do that? Well, if you can, pause this video in just a moment Go to our Facebook page or our website and get the resources to investigate the next bit of Luke's Gospel. And if you're not going to do that, well, hang fire for a moment and we'll come back together in just a little while. Happy investigating! Well, welcome back, investigators. Thank you for spending that time investigating Dr. Luke's evidence and the evidence of the stranger on the road. Now, as you looked at that evidence, you saw at the beginning two men. They were like this. They were very, very sad. They'd put their trust in Jesus. They thought he was God's king who was going to rescue them. But then he died and they were sad. All their hopes had been destroyed. And then they'd heard that strange news that, that Jesus' tomb was empty. And then they met that stranger. They didn't recognise him to start with, did they? But it was Jesus. And as he walked along, he talked to them. And he told them that actually there was evidence that all along the Bible, the Old Testament prophets had said that God's king would die and then rise again. But they'd struggled to believe it. But then, did you find that extra bit of evidence that when they were sitting down and Jesus broke the bread, then they realised they saw who it was. It was Jesus. He was alive and he was right in front of them. No longer were their faces downcast like this. Suddenly, they were really happy. In fact, they ran to tell the disciples, we've seen Jesus. He is alive. Do you know, that is just the evidence that I was looking for in the case of the Christ. It's one thing to hear the tomb was empty, but another to hear from people that Jesus appeared to them, just like you can see me now. Jesus really is alive. And all this was promised. Doesn't that help us to trust Jesus' words for ourselves? To trust Jesus as our King? Because if he said that and did that, well, we can trust him for everything. But I wonder what that difference is this is going to make to our lives. Well, I sense this case is not quite finished. And so come back next week for the last instalment in the case of the Christ, where we're going to see, well, what does that mean for you and me? Until then, if you want to do the crafts and other activities afterwards, have lots of fun. If not, until next week, investigators, Happy investigating. Bye.